In this video, you will learn general procedures that are followed by researcher and statistician widely for testing a hypothesis. Testing hypothesis is a huge demanded statistical tool by many disciplines and professionals. It is a step-by-step -step procedure as you will see in this video through a large number of examples. The aim of this video is to give you a flavor that a sequence which involves the following steps. These are the generally used steps to test the hypothesis. In some books it may vary. Some of the steps are elaborated. Some of the steps are merged with another steps. Somewhat generally these steps are followed by most of the people to testing the hypothesis. So first one set up null and alternative hypothesis. After that decide the level of significance for your test and choose an appropriate test statistics. Calculate the value of the test statistic. Obtain the critical value. Compare the critical value with the tested statistics. And finally you will derive at conclusion. So I will go in detail about all these steps so that you can understand it very easily by giving too many examples. Then let us go for set up null and alternative hypothesis. Before you move into the testing hypothesis, the very first step is to set up null and alternative hypothesis. As we know, we will calculate statistics for single sample and two sample, three samples also. Suppose here we want to test the hypothetical claimed or resumed value of theta, null theta of parameter theta. So we can take null and alternative hypothesis as follows. In the description box you can see most of the component topics that are related to testing hypothesis from basic to complex. I have covered all the aspects like the formulation of null hypothesis, formulation of alternative hypothesis where I have considered real world problem to formulate. Along with that I have also made videos on one tail test, two tail test, how to decide one tail, two tail and critical reason. Also rejection reason, choosing a type of statistical test, measurement scales and so many videos I have made. Please do see in the description box. Also subscribe to my Vision Academy YouTube channel. For null hypothesis theta equal to theta and for alternative hypothesis theta not equal to theta. And this is for two tailored test because alternative hypothesis is a in equality type equality or not equality type so it is for two tailored test then other possibilities are null hypothesis would be lesser than or equal to theta lesser than or equal to theta and alternative hypothesis are contradictory of this is uh, theta greater than theta and one more possibility is, is null hypothesis would be greater than or equal to theta and alternative hypothesis would be theta lesser than or equal to theta. So these two combination of null and alternative hypothesis for one tailored test because look at the alternative hypothesis in this example alternative hypothesis is a right tailored because a greater than symbol and in the second one it is a lesser than symbol so it is a left tailored and suppose in case of a comparing same parameter of two population of interest say theta 1 and theta 2 then our null and alternative hypothesis would be like this where null hypothesis equal to theta 1 equal to theta 2 and alternative hypothesis would be theta 1 not equal to theta 2. So as we know we can concentrate on alternative hypothesis. This is for two tailored test because alternative hypothesis having not equality type and other possibilities are null hypothesis would be theta 1 lesser than or equal to theta 2 and alternative hypothesis theta 1 greater than theta 2 and other possibility theta null hypothesis would be theta 1 greater than or equal to theta 2 and uh, alternate hypothesis would be theta 1 lesser than theta 2. In any form of hypothesis, these six possibilities will come. Three possibilities in null hypothesis and three possibilities in alternative hypothesis. And this is for one tailored test. You can concentrate on alternative hypothesis, which is for one tailored test. If you want a detailed lecture on how to formulate null and alternative hypothesis, 
प्लीज लुक इन टू द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स वेर आई हेव मेड अ सेपरेट वीडियो ऑन द फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ नल एंड अल्टरनेट हाइपोथेसि एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो हाउ टू डिसाइड वन टेल टेस्ट एंड टू टेल टेस्ट इन डीटेल आलसो लुक इन टू द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स वेर आई हेव गिवन अ सेपरेट वीडियो फॉर दैट देन अवर सेकेंड स्टेप वुड बी डिसाइडिंग द लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेन्स दट इज आलफा After uh, setting the null and alternate hypothesis, we establish a criteria for rejection of non uh, or non-rejection of null hypothesis. That is using alpha, and it decides the level of significance for your hypothesis testing. In your example, if you are given with alpha, please use that, or else generally most of the people generally take alpha as five percent. Also, there is a 10% alpha, 5% alpha, 1% alpha, and if you convert this into 100%, that is 0.05, 0.01. Here you need to decide the level of alpha. This is also based on your confidence interval, based on your knowledge regarding the level of thoroughness in your research, based on the knowledge regarding the level of confidence interval for your research. You will have to insert. You will have to establish a criteria for rejection or non rejection of null hypothesis that is a significance level we have to decide the significance level normally 5% are commonly used after deciding alpha we can move on to the next step called choose an appropriate test statistics so here in the hypothesis testing in the parametric test you want to decide which type of test you are following it based on the data number of sample and so on If your sample is less than 30, it will go for T test. If it is larger sample, it will go for F test. Like this, there are some standard form of uh, statistical test like the chi-square test, T test, F test, or any other well-known uh, in the literature. You can decide. You can choose appropriate test. Here we are using appropriate test. It must be appropriate for your problem. As I said, you for uh, more than 30 sample. you are uh, not going for t test you need to go for f test because f test is made for large sample test also you must be ensured for your data that uh, normally whether normally distributed and so many things so formula for testing statistics is statistics minus value of the parameter under ho and standard error this we can interpret as population mean minus uh, sample mean divided by standard deviation by n you can interpret like that so here we can assume at population mean that that will be subtracted by sample mean and it must be divided by standard deviation uh, divided by n number of sample so to insert standard error into a statistics after choosing an appropriate test for statistics obviously you need to calculate the value of test uh, statistics using this uh, formula on the basis of observed sample after testing the chosen appropriate test statistics the next step is obtaining critical value or cut off value once you test the statistics you, you need to obtain the critical value in the sampling distribution of the test statistics and construct rejection reason that's a critical reason of size alpha so in the sampling distribution you need to plot you need to plot the critical reason that's a rejection reason by using alpha generally critical values for various levels of significance are put to in the form of table for various standard sampling distribution of test statistics such as using z table x square table t table etc it based on the type of test, test you are for calculating in the current scenario so if you are uh, testing using z test you need to for go for z table if you are uh, calculating chi square test you need to go for chi square test table if you are going uh, calculating t test you need to go for t test table there are separate table for every different type of test so from the respected test you need to obtain the critical value so after obtaining critical value please plot that to critical value in the sampling distribution now you already tested the statistics you have that uh, respected value with you something value you have and you have also obtained a critical value from the respected table that also you have you have with you now you want to decide 
criteria for rejection for deciding criteria for rejection you want to compare the calculated value of test statistics with critical value in the step 4 you obtained critical value in the step 3 you calculated the test statistics you need to compare critical value with statistics that you are tested using respected uh, chi square test z test or x square and after comparing locates that the position of calculated test statistics that is uh, it lies in rejection region or non rejection region after comparing you have to locate that now finally after doing all these things you want to take a decision that is derive conclusion always you keep in your mind the decision will be obtained based on the critical value that is a table value with the tested statistics after plotting after locating the both value into the sampling distribution now how to obtain that uh, decision look at here very carefully if the calculated value that is a tested statistics using respected test lies in rejection region at alpha level of significance level then we directly reject the null hypothesis example if i want to show you this is a sampling distribution assume and this is a sampling distribution we plotted our critical value here this is a cv cv just for just for assumption cv and we have a it is a rejection reason rejection reason rr and this is one minus alpha which means non rejection reason now what i what i am telling is if the calculated value of tested statistics if your tested statistics falling here somewhere here here somewhere here here somewhere here but not here not the in the shaded value shaded area then we have to reject the null hypothesis because it is falling in the rejection reason anything above the critical reason if your tested statistics falling ah, above the critical reason, you have to reject the null hypothesis. So that is what I am talking. If calculated value of test statistics lies in rejection reason, rejection reason is simply the reason which I shaded here. Shaded here, that is a rejection reason. If it falls into this reason, just reject the null hypothesis. And other possibilities also we do have. If the calculated value that is a tested statistics lies in non rejection reason at alpha level of significance level, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. Example, your tested statistics is falling here, your tested st statistics is falling here. Uh, falling here anything below within this unshaded area and you can name it as non rejection region if it tested statistics falls into this reason you are not going to reject the null hypothesis you are going to accept the null hypothesis if it falls in the rejection reason you are going to reject the null hypothesis if it falls if it it means the tested uh, statistics falls in the unshaded area will not be rejected the null hypothesis if it lies in the rejection area you will reject the null hypothesis in this case if you reject the null hypothesis it means what does it mean it means that the sample data provide us sufficient evidence against the null hypothesis and there is a significant difference between the hypothesized value and observed value of parameter that is why we are rejecting the null hypothesis and if, if we are not decide if you are not reject the null hypothesis means that the sample data fails to provide us sufficient evidence against the null hypothesis which means it is supporting the null hypothesis and the difference that is a significant difference between hypothesized value and observed value of the parameter due to fluctuation in the sample we can conclude like that so these are the very few steps we follow to test our hypothesis and nowadays you might have been come across the st software statistical software that uh, SPSS, SAS, Stata, Minitab, Excel and so many software you might have heard. Nowadays in these statistical software the decisions are taken about the null hypothesis with the p-value. Very important p-value has a significant prominence in statistical software because in any either the any software the decisions will be based on the p value you will compare p value with the significance value that is alpha you will compare with alpha 
and he will come arrive at a decision because in computer packages and statistical software such as SPSS, SAS, Stata, Minitab and Excel it with in all the statistical software we derive our decision in hypothesis testing based on the p-value thank you so much for watching please do subscribe to my vision academy youtube channel here i have given a complete lectures on uh, hypothesis basic and background all the videos are available in the description box please do subscribe to my vision academy youtube channel thank you so much